if you want to learn cool stuff like this, this one up. then you've come to the right place. Today's video will be how you can learn how to make custom maps for Teardown and import pretty much any voxel-based model and destroy it just the way that Teardown meant to do. Now, once we load up Teardown, we press play, create, and inside of create, it says create your own sandbox level using the free voxel modeling Magic of Voxel. We have provided example levels that you can modify or replace with your own creation. Find out more on our webpage. Now it also tells you down here where your files are located and you can already see that mine looks just a little bit different than yours because I have a custom level added here when I was messing around with this. So the very first thing that we want to do is go to our Steam folder, go to Steam apps, press common, and we want to find teardown. Once we are at teardown, we want to go to create and inside of create, we have the files that we need. And this is also the path that we were taken to from inside of the game. Now, this is where all of your files are located in here. I recommend that you now take a backup of all of the stuff that you have here. Simply just throw that stuff into backup or at least just the file folders that you know that you will be messing with. For me, I know that I have messed with these, so I back these up before messing with them. And this is also where you find all of the files that we will be editing in this video so first of all for the custom in here we have custom vox the right now you will not see anything other than a file that you will not be able to edit because we have not gotten magic of voxel yet which is the program that we have to download in order to edit these maps so in order for us to find magic of voxel we have to go to google and type in magic voxel press enter go to the first web page that pops up download and you will be taken to here and depending on what system you are running teardown on you want to download either of these for me i am going to download this one and once the download is ready all we have to do is open up the files and copy and paste these over to a folder of your choice which is where magic voxel will be run from now after you have done that all you need to do is simply right click on your vox files and click open with and you select Magic of Voxel and always use this app to open box files. And easy as that, there we have our world open. Since this is custom, this is simply just an empty box object at this moment. Now, another step of editing these files is going to the XML files and editing some of the basic values of the game. For this, I recommend that you get either a code editor, notepad can work just fine. But for the sake of simplicity and getting a more structured coding, well, then I definitely recommend that you log into just a basic code editor. Don't get frightened about the fact that this is coding because it's really not that hard to find your way through. So now that we have done that, I want you guys to get comfortable with Magic of Voxel. And I once again want to stress that if you haven't done it already, do back up the files that you are going to load. So this is the basic vehicles map that we have loaded. Now, there are no vehicles in here yet. That is because it's handled by scripting. So that will be hidden in the XML files but more on that later. Now you can see that I've added a bunch of rockets here. This is something that I used in my previous video to do a bit of fun stuff with and I forgot to back up my world. So this is now eternally stuck in here unless I delete it, which is luckily quite easy. So we have our basic world loaded up here. Before we get into how I did this, I'm just going to cover the basics of Magic of Voxel so you can find your way through it because it can be a bit of a frightening program at first when you see it. The most basic basic things that you need to know is that we have two different modes while we are in Magic of Voxel. We have the world mode, which we are not in right now. This is actually the model mode. So if I press tab, here we go to the world mode. In the world mode, we have the ability to select any object on the map and move these around. Now, if I select this one, then I can freely move this. I was on the wrong tool before. Don't worry about that. I'll get to that in a second. But as you can see, once I've selected this, I can freely move this all around the world within the boundaries and in here pretty much do all that I want with the objects. We can move them just like we want to. Control C to cancel any option or any edit that you made. And this is the world mode, which is mostly just used for structuring your world. But if you want to edit individual models, you have to press tab. If you press tab, we get taken to the model editor instead. So if we select the rocket here and I press tab, you can also, instead of pressing tab, click this button right here. 
but for simplicity and for actually using your keyboard instead of having to scroll all through the screen, well, then I definitely suggest that you use tab. So once we've done that, we have the model right here. And at this time, this model is rather huge, but maybe we would want to make it wider. So you can always find the size of your model up here. These are the X, Y, Z coordinates. If we would want to make this taller, well, then we can always edit these and change the parameters of our object. So if I change this to 100 on the X axis, as you can see, this has now gotten wider, but maybe we just want to allocate enough space and make sure that we have enough space. And now we can build out from here. So if I, instead of erase, press attach, and I maybe extrude this, as you can see, now we have the ability to move this all the way out there, but we don't really want to do that. So we're going to go to erase again and pull that in and say that you're thinking I am fine with the size of this model. Now it looks great. And you want the object to have the hitbox of this actual thing, or just fit the size of this thing. Then you press the button next to the switch between world and model model mode. If we press here, bam, there we go. The object is now the size of the actual model that we have made. When we are editing the model, we have a few different options over here. We have geometry mode, voxel shader, pattern, voxel mode, face mode, and box mode. All of these apply things in different patterns. And as you can see here, first of all, the box mode, you can, as it pretty much describes, draw boxes. If you take the extrude, it will take any face and all of the connected voxels on that face that has the same material. So if we extrude these, we can only extrude here and here. So it extrudes all of the faces that are leveled and with the same material. So if I drag this, I will only do those, even though these are actually on the same level. The voxel mode is just simply one voxel at a time, and we can pretty much draw however we want to around the map. Now, all of these different tools here have a bunch of awesome things that you can do. So I would just encourage you to play around with these as you develop your skills in Magic of Voxel. Next to all of the options that we have over here, we also have the option to rotate our objects or our voxels in here. And if we press this, as you can see, we can rotate this. We can flip it if we want to. There we go. We can loop it, which kind of just moves it over on whatever axis you decide to. We're just going to cancel that as well. And we can scale it. Now, if we scale this, it will look a bit weird. And that is simply because of the fact that objects have a size limit, which is 256. So you can't go over 256 by 256 by 256 on all axes. So that's very important to remember. And just like anything else, all of these have a bunch of different uses for it. Now, as you notice here, our side boosters disappeared. We can actually avoid that. And the reason that they did disappear is we have to move the model wider like that. So now if we rotate it there, whoops, if we rotate it 45, just we actually get to keep the boosters there still. So then we resize and now you can see that this looks kind of different from the other ones. We want to go into world mode now because these two are clipping into each other right now. So they're going to be considered one object if we launch the game now. But all we have to do is simply just drag this one out a little bit while we are in world mode. And then we can go back into a model mode if we want to change anything about the model. Besides that, we can also mirror our object as you can just see there. So we mirrored it on one axis or we can mirror it on this axis. And this is always taken from the center of mass of the thing. So wherever you want to mirror it, well, it'll be done at the center of the thing that you have created. And finally, we have a bunch of different things down here where you can fill your object with a specific shape of any sort. This will delete the previous one that you had. So be careful about doing this. And there are just so many different things that you can do. Again, this is something that I encourage you guys to just do on your own. Play around a little bit with it if you are unsure what each of them do. Over here, we have the standard color palette of, of Teardown. And these are the colors that are used in this specific map here. The good thing about this is that all of these materials are already considered a specific thing. For example, I chose a custom orange color here, and this is a type of iron that is not destructible. So the second that I start using this color, this will no longer be destroyed. Now, I do not know if these are bound to hex colors or whatever. That is something that I have not personally figured out yet. So I would say for the beginners who do not know much about coding, use the colors that are given to you already because these function just fine as destructible pieces and you'll find out quickly which ones are related to what, where brown often means wood and these grayish tones either means stone or steel and green often means leaves or likewise. So there is a bunch of different colors that you can use for this one. The last thing we need to do in here before we save this and load it up inside of 
teardown is simply that we want to see if we can import a new object into here. This is luckily also super simple. We have to go back to our teardown folder and inside of our teardown folder, we can go to vehicle and inside that we have a bunch of different vehicles, which will also be present in this map. Like I said before, this is handled through scripting, so you cannot see them right now. But if you want a static car in here for whatever purpose, we go back here and we grab any one of these. It's a simple pick and drop if you want a vehicle in here. And as you can see now, this object is empty. There we go. So I dragged in the saloon car instead. And there it is. There we have our saloon car. Now that is how you handle any objects inside of the editor here. Go to your folder, drag any bit of object that you want in here as long as it's a Vox object. Magic and Voxel should be able to handle object files as well, but I have not had any success with that myself and I simply just don't know en enough about this program to be sure to say why that has been the issue. There we go. And we can place a couple of cars in the parking lot here for our static objects. I'm going to go ahead and delete some of these so we don't have too many rockets in here. We want for simplicity's sake just to keep this somewhat simple. But this is our world that I am now going to save. This is done super easy. We simply just have to press save and that is all. Now this is saved and once we load up this map inside of teardown, we can press create. And since this was a vehicle level that we used, we are going to go ahead and press vehicle level. And now that we are here, you will see there is our rocket. Here is the car that we parked, which has some weird shading to it. Also the saloon car over here. I don't know, this might just be the material we use for these. That looks a bit weird. But here are all of the cars that have been spawned in by this scripting. So we can go ahead and drive any of these. And as you'll be able to tell once we get over here, all of the objects that we now put down are something that we can interact with in either ways. And the interaction will be based on the material that has been used for these. Now, this very much depends on the color used. And again, colors are bound to specific materials. So if you want to find out exactly what a material is, well, the best way is to just use the colors that are shown already. So you won't end with indestructible objects like I've just created here with the orange color. The only limitation to this is at the end of the day, your own creativity. Now that's funny. I think the reason that we have a static car here is simply because the cars that we put down don't necessarily have any material bound to them and that's why they end up looking like that again wheels and all that stuff is handled through scripting so if you want to plunk down these i do not recommend but what i recommend is that you go find objects on the internet and just look up for any voxel models i'll leave a link to some different ones that i've used previously in my videos down in the description so you can find those at least oh and there goes our rocket because it fell over since it burned all the way down. Now, once we've done that, we want to move on to the next step, which is editing game files. And if you want to edit game files, you need a coder. Like I said, if you don't have that, well, you can right click these XML files. If we were actually there, we go and press open with notepad. You won't be you will be able to edit these, but the coding will just all be black and white. So it can be a bit hard to find your way through all of this. Once you open the more complicated ones like the vehicle, which we are interested in. So if I open this, as you can see, there is a bunch of text. But if we, on the other hand, just look through this one, I do believe that most of you probably will not buy or download a coding editor. So we are going to do it in Notepad just so that everyone can follow along. If we check out the vehicle name sports car here, that is the green car that was placed it down in the previous world. We have a line here that says vehicle name sports car position. This is where the car will be spawned and the rotation, as you could see, it was like kind of parked into the parking slot just loosely instead of actually nicely aligned with the car parking spot. But the things that we are truly interested in is the top speed. And for these values, I haven't even been able to find the sort of max values for these. But if we just go ahead and change this to 500 and maybe acceleration to 200, that should give us plenty of speed and acceleration. Now, this will probably pull a lot of wheel spin, so friction, we could go ahead and just amp up to five as well and hit file save. And this is actually saved as well. Now, we don't have to do anything else. If we would like to spawn in another one of these, we would have to copy this bit right here actually nope not just that but we would have to copy all of this all the way down there so from vehicle name to dash vehicle that's all we have to copy if we want to copy this car and then we could simply paste this in so if we copy this go down two lines 
there. And now once we start doing this, this is where I really recommend that you start using a code editor because this can just be super tough. But if you change the position to let's say 20 and we hit file, save and then all we have to do now is simply go back into teardown again we have to load up the vehicle level and now when we look over here as you can see we have two cars instead of just one both of these cars will have the exact same stats so this car is super fast as you can tell <laughs> and that's basically all we have to do in order to change these now it does for the most part pull wheel spins and also just flip over because we gave the wheels just probably a bit too much traction compared to what it is able to handle but that should be okay the fun thing about doing this is the fact that we can now smack these through something like walls rather easily without having to worry about that too much and that can probably create some some pretty interesting content later on you will also get quite a lot of stutter lag but you can turn on v-sync if it gets too bad with these quick cars and that is just in your options so that's pretty pretty straightforward but that is all i had for you guys today thank you so much for watching this video i hope this helps some of you guys out if you want to create your own levels but you don't really know how to until next time have an amazing day bye bye